Um, then I will move on. I would like to move on um, to introduce uh, our next guests, um, Anna Munguia and Alexandra Geric. Um, I'm very happy to have you here today. Hello. Um, just a few words to them. Uh, Anna is originally from Spain, but at the moment she's living in Germany. Uh, she has a background in chemical engineering and international management uh, of resources and environment. In the last four years, she has been working at Allianz, a German company. Um, parallel to this, um, she's a certified professional coach and passionate about people and cultures. And uh, a few words to Alexandra as well. Um, she has a working background in developing democracy and software development, so really a developer in many senses. And uh, she also went, went through a long ongoing training in psychology, emotional intelligence uh, and leadership. And currently she's the co-founder and CEO of the company Moonwise, um, where she's a very interesting company, where she's working with individuals, teams and organizations to help them uh, to work and live in a more conscious way. And uh, Anna and Alexandra will talk about practical tools um, for building more connected teams. Um, I'm very happy to have you here. Um, please join the stage and I leave the session to you. Yes, hello. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. For Go, Anna. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Alexander. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Alexander and myself, we are thrilled to be here with you this afternoon, and we are very grateful to Heartful Dance uh, Organization to give us the chance to share a piece of our knowledge, what we have gathered so far, um, and we hope you all enjoy the topic. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone, thank you Grigor for the very nice introduction. Thank you Anna for the amazing week that we had preparing this. Um, one more thing uh, I would like to add to my introduction, maybe the most important one for me right now. Uh, uh, that is that um, I am very grateful for heartfulness for, or, for having this uh, event, but then also I am a uh, uh, heartfulness practitioner and I would uh, I would say that uh, maybe a big part of my personality right now is due to heartfulness. Uh, and it's such an honor to just go after Jane, who is the one introducing me together with Annelies to, uh, uh, to this meditation method and to this lifestyle. So I am really, really happy that we had Jane before to open the hearts so we can now just share our message uh, very easily. Thank you, Jane, and thank you, Heartfulness and Gregor, for, the, um, for uh, hosting this today. Yeah, so um, after this very warm welcome we received, we would like to um, kick off because we just have 30 minutes and it was actually very hard for us to, to keep up the time and to only share with you little pieces of all what we have um, to, to share. And for that, uh, we would like to start by um, warming up a bit uh, everyone on the other side of the screen by using Mentee. So I think everyone is familiar. So we, um, our topic is about embracing leadership and how to um, build up more connected teams and in that sense we wanted um, you to uh, start thinking on on a time where you had um, a manager or a leader that you that you admired that you appreciated that you thought this is the best manager I ever had and what was exactly that would you appreciate it from this person we want to hear a bit what are your thoughts and see if it's going to be in line with what we are going to tell you today. So if colleagues, if we can bring up to the screen our mentee presentation, ourselves, Alexandra and I will also um, give some answers. Sure. <laughs> so it should appear in a second and I think you know how it works, the Mentimeter. You just need to enter a code. So please enter the code appears there, 218250. Uh, I just want to add uh, here that uh, we will have this uh, same question and you will be able to um, enter multiple answers uh, and we'll bring it up a few time, so, times so we can see how on or whether things change uh, in between. So um, 
yeah, one thing or few things that uh, you appreciate about a leader you had so far, or maybe maybe an imaginary one. What would you appreciate if you haven't had one already? Exactly, we see the first answers already coming. Uh, with the word cloud, the more people answer the same, the words will get bigger and bigger. Yeah. So, wow, okay, now we are having a lot of answers coming in. Trust appears very big in the middle, listening, empathy. I think we can wrap it up here, Anna. <laughs> we have our answers, let's wrap it up. And <laughs> Please, Alexandra. Yes. Um, okay, so we saw, uh, we could have used it for a while longer, but we will bring it up uh, again later. Feel free to, to um, input your answers as we go. Uh, and the first uh, thing that we wanted to speak about was understanding team values. And Anna will share uh, with a personal example with her own team, uh, how that means uh, personally also to a leader. But then I would like to share before, why is that important? And what does it mean, understanding team values? So um, usually we go to a work and then we start and then we go to a team and then we are set with a job description, with tasks, and then we go and we do them. And then maybe we also have company or team values that we are in a way uh, expected to follow or to believe in. But in order to get uh, ourselves and to get the team to believe in these team values, isn't it easier if we start the other way around and then maybe listen what these people think, what their own values are. And so I, uh, there is an exercise for that or there is uh, many ways that we can do this. Uh, maybe Anna, you can go with your example uh, yes. first. Yeah. So um, a little bit, um, I, as, as an example, I took over um, a large team on January this year. And um, the first thing I, I, I did uh, to connect with all of them was to um, ask them to fulfill an online survey for um, having an overview of what are their personal values. And for that, I could recommend the audience to go into um, an online resource from Richard Barrett uh, in the valuescenter.com. There is a free of charge um, online assessment of personal values that gives you then afterwards a report. Um, and I ask all of them to please do that and to share it with me. And why I did that, I felt it was so important to understand what, what, um, what are the values of each of the people in the team, because at the end, values are the triggers for our decisions, for our behavior. So I could, as a leader, understand better um, how the people react and where, where are they coming the reactions from. And also, the most important thing, I, I think, as a leader was to also have their tasks align with their values. So if there was in any point, um, I was going to set a, give them a, a piece of, of work that was going to be um, in contrast or not in line with, with their values. But at the same time, not only I um, told them to do the assessment, I did the assessment myself and we discussed the results. Because of course, um, for a person, um, there could be a meaning for the word fun or for the word family or for the word freedom and for other could be different. So um, my piece of advice I would like to share with you is to um, take the time to take a look to your own values. What are those values? Are they in line with what you are doing? And as a leader, take a look to your team. What are their values? What do they mean for that? Um, and also share with one another so that everyone understands each other better. Yes. <laughs> Yes, exactly. I wanted to go with your example first because uh, it will then uh, be easy to show the points that I uh, that we both want to make uh, with this. So, um, as uh, as Anna said, she spoke with her team and then she understood her own values, but then each um, the values of each member of the team that she is in. And so, uh, why is this important? Well, first you know how to organize, you know which tasks suit better for which people, you know which people would like and enjoy staying late at work and which would want to go home and tend to their family and their kids after. And then of course you can organize around that. And I mentioned before um, our job descriptions or um, the company values that we are expected to in a way feel, but then 
if we create this team or company values around the people that we already have, then we wouldn't have to fit everyone into their job description or, or into their uh, role, right? Uh, but then we build our roles around the people that we already have. We build this team around what we have, what, what, we, what we need to work with. And then also the most important, you build the team vision on, on something that is, uh, that is real, that exists. It's not just some words on some paper, on some po poster on the wall. It's actual values of actual people that are going to do the actual work and fulfill the actual vision of this team. And so for me, it's just, it seems easier to start this way, if not better. I, uh, I wouldn't go into better or worse, but I would really suggest or, or think that this is easier to do, to start building your values based on what you have already. And then when, when you discuss this openly, as Anna did with, uh, uh, with probably one-on-ones with the team, but then also you can do this as a group with the team. When this is a team exercise, as I said, like it is a tool, then everyone understands everyone else and then you don't you don't expect from people you know as people we tend to expect from others what we are if we want to if we are ambitious or we will like to work over time we expect that everyone is like that but that's not true not everyone is the same as we are and not everyone have the same values and so if we just listen to each other while we share these values we would understand that we are different people with different expectations and different um, drivers. Different drivers also to make decisions, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and so, and, and different approach to work, to life, to everything. And, so, and when we know this about our colleague, we know we immediately align our expectations, even if we don't, don't do that uh, on purpose. And there is one extra thing that we get there by understanding uh, everyone's values or their personal interests even, uh, they also go under value. Um, we release a whole area of, um, of creativity uh, because uh, some people bring with them, like Yane before, they bring, they're not just this, this role, they, they, they bring 10 other roles within them. And so if someone wants to uh, design, then they can work on the design, even though their job description is chemist or something. They, they do something completely different, but they bring this personal value with them. And then we can, we can use that. Uh, and they will feel better about themselves. They will feel like they're putting more value and they will, uh, they will feel that they're, uh, what they bring is actually valued by everyone else. Uh, and so I think that that's very important. Yeah, they, you will have a very motivated team and connected. Exactly. Exactly. Actually, what we saw at the beginning when we launched the questions, the first answers, there were a lot of values in that. Maybe we can go back to the mentee and, and check how, if the audience have introduced a bit more of answers to that, can we bring the mentee colleagues? Uh, Gregor? Uh, would we have someone to bring up the mentee again? And then also everyone, uh, if you feel like you want to share anything more, please. Thanks. Trust, empathy, compassion, listening, vision, taking responsibility. The vision, right? the vision. Sharing the vision, you said that, right? Yes, exactly. Vision, Very big word there. Direction, authenticity. Wow. Very, very strong words. Beautiful. Yes, very nice. Uh, and I see trust in here, courage, empowering, amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. I, I just want to stay here and like read these words. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I will take a print screen now. Uh, yes, but um, but how do we how do we get uh, direction? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. How do we get? Uh, ourselves and our team to work towards this direction how do we how do we motivate to um, to fulfill this vision how do we build trust with each other uh, responsibility amazing um, we thought that another very big part of this maybe is uh, 
that comes out of these values and out of this vision, then we go on with the team and then uh, we set our intention, right? So this is the, the long-term, let's say, vision. But then once we have to split the work and do, uh, and do let's say, weekly plans in, in development, we have sprints. They're usually one or two weeks. Uh, we call them sprints. I'm not sure whether that is a good name, but that's what we use. <laughs> and so what, but that is a way to organize uh, and it is a way to, to discuss what we are going to do uh, next. What are we working on next and how are we going to do that? And so we thought that maybe instead of using, or uh, that is my personal approach to this, instead of using words, uh, words like sprints or goals, because I personally find very much value in the word that we use, uh, it does send a message and that message is different to every one of us. So it's very important which, use, uh, which words that we use. So instead, I'd like to, work, uh, to use the word intention because then when we, uh, with intention, you, first of all, you cannot fail since it wasn't a set, set goal, it was an intention. Uh, or uh, a very important part of that, it becomes the attitude that we have because you have a different attitude towards an intention and then you have a different attitude towards a goal. Once you have, a, uh, of course, you will have uh, deadlines and you will have to uh, fulfill and there is features that you need to build and there is something that you need to deliver. And of course, we, uh, there, it is important to be productive and deliver in your work. But then uh, I think personally, it's, uh, it's easier to deliver because there is no stress, there is no pressure around intention, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there is one uh, exercise that I really like uh, around intentions. Uh, intention setting, that is first shifting the word from goal to intention. That is the first major shift that happens and it does bring value. It does bring a lot of change just by changing the word. But then I also suggest, or that is how I work uh, in my work, um, I like to use, and there is, this is not something that, uh, uh, that it is only me that is doing. There is a lot, a lot of company now doing it. And also, if you were listening to the previous sessions, you heard that some of the speakers already, or, or some of the colleagues that are working with similar work, work like us, they are also already doing it. And so, uh, setting intention, and this is the weekly meeting that we have, we organize, we split our work, and then we sit together in silence for a while to just to set up our energies, to feel each other, to maybe remember something more that we would like to add, or maybe to, uh, to understand uh, what others have said. We don't go straight to the work, we just sit together for a while. Maybe it's a minute, maybe it's five, depending on how comfortable is the team. I'm not going to call it meditation, but it is a meditation. We just sit there, we feel each other, and then we slowly continue towards the work. We don't rush from the meeting straight to the work. And that really, really helps the attitude that we have towards the work that we, and towards the colleagues uh, that we will have the whole week. Yeah. So adding back to, to your powerful message, Alexandra, in, in attitude, I also would like to share a little experience. So um, for me, attitude is also super important. And I am a person that believes in what they call the law of attraction, no? Positive attracts positive and negative attracts negative. And it's something I lift myself. So I'm a very positive person. It's always looking for the positive side. Um, and um, this is actually um, backed by, by science, like neuroscience and neuroplasticity, neuroplasticity, how much you can change your brain by the way you think. And if you are always looking for the positive side, probably more positive things happen to you. Actually, the probability it doesn't depend on the way you think, but you will probably also always look for this positive side and focus on, on that positive part. I would like to bring also a quote of Heinrich Ford that says, whether you think you can, or you think you cannot, you are right. Yeah. And that's exactly how I, how I live, right? Um, a lot of times people say, no, actually, you are very lucky and I, the, everything goes well on your life. And it's like, no, I, I also have bad luck. There is also bad moments, but I always try to think the positive part, take the learning out of, of the bad moments and, and move forward by always looking for those positive, um, positive things and, and positive outcomes and, and the learnings. So I totally agree with you, Alexander. Attitude is super important in, in the way we work, in the way we treat each other and in this pursuing the 
the vision or the intention. Mm, exactly. So um, shall we take a quick look uh, back to our mentee to see if something has changed out of this reflection? And up, until, yes, it shows up, I, uh, I would I like to add like a, two more things about this. Uh, I might share later, I, I didn't have it prepared, but uh, I just remembered it when I said like that uh, many others are doing, not just in this session and not this, just more spiritual people are doing that, but it's also, uh, it's Google and it's uh, Fortune 500 companies that mm -hmm. are doing this intention setting meditations. So check them out, uh, see, you can find anything, like just Google anything and you will find a lot of uh, tasks already and it's uh, and it's I very much like what you said there uh, about the positive uh, attitude towards th toward things uh, what I also like to speak about a lot and don't have time to speak about here but I will just mention it is uh, whether we are love driven or fear driven it does change a lot how we drive and so uh, just keep that in mind. It, it, I does, don't have to go deeper. These words will resonate. Um, I am sure. Yes. Uh, trust, empathy, compassion. You know, it actually okay. fits better. It fits perfect all what we have here uh, with Thank our you. next topic because trust and listening and empathy are huge there in the middle. So seems that are the ones that people are most voting. And this was exactly the, um, the third part on, on our um, experience sharing that we would like to focus on. Okay. Alexandra, would you like to start? Uh, yes, uh, as we were discussing, uh, that we want to speak, uh, there were many things that we wanted to speak about. These are only three that we had to agree on so we can wrap it up in half an hour. But trust, or we call it honest communication and empathetic listening. Uh, it is very similar uh, to, the, uh, to the active listening that we heard about before. Uh, it's just we add a little empathy to this because, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, the world is female. How do we say it like uh, now? That, that is a, a very uh, trendy hashtag to use. Uh, I, I don't want to put people in boxes or feminine or masculine, but there are these traits in leadership or in everything, in life, in people that would be considered more feminine. That doesn't mean that it's only uh, females that can do it. Uh, we, we can equally, all of us, do them, but we probably right now we find them more important and more female connected traits in uh, one's personality and empathetic listening or empathy in general being one of them. Uh, why do we need this? Uh, and then this is, it's very hard to split these things that we are discussing in three topics because they really just flow uh, one into the other. But building trust is very, very important. Um, and how do we build trust? By, be, by having these exercises that we have, uh, but then also by being honest. It's very easy to build trust when you are yourself honest, right? And uh, again, I will go back to development because this is my recent, um, this is my recent uh, work experience. And this is where I actually saw some of this. Um, so how I came to work with this, what, uh, was because I switched team teams very often and especially in the last uh, two years and in every single team that I went this beautiful amazing professionals people that know so much just having this communication issues it was very hard for me to see it was I I, I could not understand it now I do understand it uh, and that's why I really want to help with it and building trust is one of the most important things in it. And so, uh, and we have in development this morning uh, meetings. So when we, when we run this sprint that we agreed on, and then every morning we would have a meeting to set up, um, to set up uh, our daily work and to speak to our colleagues about our work. But then if we just add a one minute, a less than one minute sharing, uh, this might sound like a spiritual practice, but sharing li really with your group is very important. Like when you come home from, uh, to your family from work, you tell them I had a hard day, right? Because you want them to understand that you might be a little bit absent, you might be a little bit tired. And when you use this, this same, and I very uh, often say that with my team, I, I, I use family rules. There is no, um, 
the teams that I work with uh, now, I want them to feel each other like a family because then, then you can come to work and be honest today I just couldn't wake up or I ran after the bus or I got stressed or I feel amazing. Give me everything. I'll do everything today. You can just all sit and relax because I feel like Superman today. And that's very important. It really helps the team to understand how these things, uh, what they can expect. But yeah. then, and then we communicate this clearly. And then it's also very important to listen when others share and listen and, and really try to understand that and embody that and don't judge, don't respond. Uh, there is no need. You just need to listen, take it in and uh, it's theirs so they can say whatever they want, right? I, I agree. So this is exactly also one of the things I, I did when I, I took over the change to, to the team, sorry. So I was uh, feeling that there was not enough communication and there was not a platform where people could open up and share how they were feeling. So we started these this, um, team meetings and these stand-ups where we would just answer three questions like, how are you feeling today? What's, what's on your mind? What's on your heart? Um, what are your, your tasks or what would you like to share with the team and how could we support you? So give the team a platform where they can talk, where they can exchange with each other, where synergies can be found and they can grow together. And also um, something about this, this listening uh, part that was very big on, on our um, answers from the audience. Um, this is, I think, such an important uh, value that a, a good leader should have. And I want to share a short um, story because we unfortunately are coming up to the, to the end of our session and there are some questions from the audience that we will take in a minute. But I would like to, to share with you um, something. So uh, I took over um, the team in, in January this year and actually um, I had no clue. I, I, have to, I will be open here. I had no clue about what the bigger team was doing. So I was an expert on a topic. I was an environment officer and then suddenly I took over the whole department of operations and there were so many topics I had no clue. And that made me a bit afraid at the beginning, but at the end, eventually I understood that I do not need to know everything because the answers are inside each of the team members in the team. And you just need to listen to that empathic listening, feel with them, see how they are um, doing, what are behind the words they are saying. And by placing the right questions, you can help them finding the, the, the solutions because they have the solutions inside them. You just need to believe as a manager that they are resourceful and activate with the right questions, that thinking and that um, solution uh, um, and creation approach. And just sharing that, and I think we have some questions from the audience, uh, Gregor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for until now. Um, there, is, there are questions from the audience. I will probably just um, share for now. I will share one of them. It is how to say no to your leader without this is probably the point without feeling threatened, mm -hmm. that it might ruin the relationship. Can you say something about this? Wow, um, that's a um, very powerful question. Yeah. So I, I will give an answer, Alexandra, tell also then your mind afterwards. So um, I think that no one um, should be afraid of sharing with his or her manager, how are they feeling? And if they are feeling that a decision is not correct, um, everyone should should speak up, right? So um, I am a person that feels that emotions and, and feelings are very important and you need to connect and um, you need to try to see, um, explain to your manager why what you are telling him is of a value. Why do you think that's the, the, the why, why do you think your proposal could be a solution? Not saying to him that he's not right or she is not right, but more like there are alternatives and that we could together find maybe a better compromise or a better solution where every point is meet in the middle. I agree completely with what Anna said. Uh, we have shared, we have said this, I agree completely. I agree completely a couple of times uh, in, this, in this week while preparing. I would just like to add uh, we tend, at least that's how I have personally felt in my life before, uh, we tend to see our managers as a threat anyway. We tend, and then also th that depends on the manager, it can be true. But then most of the time, I, would, I hope uh, and I believe that it, that's not true. The manager or the leader or the whatever we have there uh, as an authority, we don't have to see it as an authority. It's a person that is there to help us. Yeah. They do their work, 
through us doing our work. And what they are there for is to help us do our work good. So maybe also question this, whether there is a real threat there, if any. And if any, maybe you should question whether you want to work for this person or not. But uh, otherwise, most of the time, there is no threat there. You just need to be honest with your no, and you need to know the reasons with, for your no, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'll probably take one last question, if that's okay for you. Yeah. Um, it's um, also interesting somehow, how would you advise a leader to handle differences of opinions between team members? Ooh, interesting. Say something so, about this, yeah. Alexander, do you want to again, start? Uh, uh, I, again, I would go back to sharing and I would go back to honesty and I would go back to setting vision uh, and values together. Uh, and then also questioning those values. Every couple of months we change completely as people, as individuals we change, and then we expect everyone to stay the same. No, uh, so we change and we set these things and we communicate uh, honestly. And then if there is differences, of course, we, we, have to, we have to settle them or we have to find the middle ground. But uh, otherwise, once we have this practice of honesty and sharing and constant uh working together then we don't go to such uh, strong differences that would be an issue i think I totally agree. I think in this case, there is where I totally see the value of this uh, activity of value solicitation and going through your team from their values, because then you can really understand why um, there is two, the, the, all these two different opinions are coming from. Um, of course, there is always the objective part and the facts um, that help can help you building up a solution or finding a middle ground. But um, by understanding the values uh, of the personal values of each of your team members, you can also understand why they defer their opinions and how you can also find a way to bring them together. Mm. Okay, thank you really. It was really interesting. Thank you so much for the insights about self-evaluation and leadership and how to connecting teams. Um, yeah, I think uh, if it's okay for you, we would um, continue. Thank you really for, your, uh, for the session. Um, thank you so much also. We had though a few takeaways for our audience and it's shorter than a minute but you don't have to be the leader you don't have to be uh, a role in a team you can do this at home you can do this with your friends you can do this with your colleagues show gratitude you heard it in many sessions before say thank you it doesn't matter if that's their job or not just say thank you you won't waste them yeah. celebrate each other's victories right yeah celebrate yeah. and give positive feedback to people tell them that they have done a good job that's very awesome. I just saw in the chat here popping up someone telling us that we did a great job and I already melted. And so that's very important. Do it. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Today and Thank you, Anna. All the best.